I describe myself as a typical teenager, you know. If, you know, I, I want to do something, I'm going to do it. You know, I love having fun. I actually really enjoyed high school. I, you know, I miss it now, but I think college, realistically, I find college a lot easier than high school ever was, you know. So much pressure with high school. I decided to be a mechanic because, you know, my dad was a backyard mechanic. My sister took the same course, so, you know, and I've always loved working on cars, and it just, it was just something that came so naturally to me. When I first graduated high school, I was really nervous about college, but, you know, everybody helped me, you know, my family was there for me, my friends, you know, they were all supportive of what I, what I chose to do because, you know, they're there for you regardless. Once it happened, you know, the first day of college, you know, sort of, I was sort of relieved that, you know, hey, there's, you know, all these guys accept me for who I am and not, you know, somebody who's not going to be able to do it. It gave me the benefit of the doubt. You know, I had to work towards the goal in high school, you know, my last year of high school, you know. Once I decided I wanted to be a mechanic, I sort of focused all my courses around, you know, some of the trades, you know, like, carpentry and all that, you know, just to get a leeway of what the trades are like and, you know, you know, everything, regardless of who you are, you know, it's all the same for, there's no particular free way out just because you're in a wheelchair, you, everything's the same. One of the biggest barriers I had to overcome was, you know, people telling me I couldn't do it because I'm in a wheelchair. Realistically, auto mechanics is probably one of the most physically demanding trades available. Well, there were some people that said I should do an office job, but I just can't picture myself sitting in an office all day. I realized that in mechanics there's going to be stuff I can't do and there's stuff, you know, I'm going to need help with and I'm not afraid to admit when I need help. You know, some people are, but I'm just the type of person, if I need help, I'm going to ask straight up. When I first applied for the automotive service technician course, I didn't even think about that I'm in a wheelchair, I just said, you know, I love mechanics, I love cars, and this is something I really want to do, so I just decided I'm going to do it. I set my goals as if I was a normal person, and then once I get to the goals, I just, I get to them and then figure out how I can get around it with the wheelchair. I factored in at the time. The transition was hard at first because I had to realize that I had to become more dependent on myself than relying on my mother, mom and dad to do everything for me. So I learned very quickly that I have to do stuff for myself now on a more of a level than I had to before when I was in high school. There was a couple of people that tried to discourage me, but you know, like I've always told myself, I'm the only person that can decide what I want to do. I know what I can do and what I can't do, so I just didn't listen to them. The advice I'd give would be, you know, you're the only person that can control what you want to do, you know, don't listen to everybody else if they're trying to discourage you, you know. You're going to find out pretty quick who's going to be there and who isn't going to be there for you. There's always going to be courses and, you know, people out there that can help you set realistic goals and help you accomplish them easier than it would be if you set them yourself and tried to accomplish them through other ways.